Hello, uh, welcome to my video. I'm going to be talking about overloading functions. This is one I've been talking about for a while, but I'm actually going to do it today. So I've created this form and it's going to convert US dollars into Japanese yen. I could have picked any other currency. Um, so first thing I had to do is I went to Google and I said, hey, what's the conversion rate? And I see it's 95.45. So we're going to use this information to create a program. So here's my program. There's a text box. You're going to enter dollars. It's going to spit out yen. So when I double click on the button, I'm going to jump over to code mode. And I already have a little bit of data in here. Uh, so I've created this class level variable called factor. And that's basically going to be, you know, how many yen do you get for your dollar? I just looked it up and I saw that it was 95.45, right? Good. That's a good start. So I used a class level variable because I'm going to have several functions going on. And so either I would have this variable created locally in every function, or I just do it once at the class level, or I pass it to every function as a parameter. Everything except this involves a, a bunch of uh, repetition, so I'm just not going to do that. So here is where, what's going to happen when you click on the button. Basically, we're going to strip the USD out of the form, so that's the contents of that text box and I'm going to pass it to some functions presumably. So now on to creating the functions. Keyword function, then I need to give it a name like convert, and now I need to find the parameters. I'm going to say the parameters, let's just say you pass it US dollars, and I'm going to call that amount as double. Double makes sense because you might pass it something like $1.50 or $2. And so what's it going to return? I'm going to say it's going to return a double. I debated having it return a string, but I'm not going to. So I've kind of got the, it's telling me I need to return something. So I'm, I'm just going to go straight to the return statement because that needs to happen. And what do I want to return? Uh, so what I want to return is basically amount times the factor. All right, so factor is this variable I defined up here. So if it's one dollar, it's going to be ninety-five point four five, and that's really all I'm doing here. So this little uh, comment here says call function. So let me call that function. I'm going to call it convert, and I'm passing it USD, which is whatever you enter on the form. Let's run this thing and see how it behaves, and that'll kind of set us up for the actual discussion of overloading. So I run. I say one dollar is nothing because I haven't printed anything out to the screen so rather than just call a function let's just pretend I did that on purpose because yeah I did um, so text yen dot text equals c string whatever that function returns so now I can run it and I convert one into yen and I get 95.45 where this gets kind of weird is to say I put in a whole bunch of decimals I get this really long answer, right? And maybe that's what I want, maybe it's not. Probably not. What would be logical? Well, in US dollars, we usually return things to two decimal places. So rather than just return the math, let's do a math.round, right? And we'll round it to two places. Now, that interesting thing about all those format uh, currencies, percents, math.rounds, they all, all, those are all uh, overridden functions as well because they either can take a second argument or not. Now if I do something like this, I'm only going to get two spots, which is probably what I want. But let's say that I want the ability to either just have this default behavior of getting two decimal places or as many decimal places as I'd like. This is where overriding a function comes in. So I'm going to write another function, and here's where it's overridden. I call it the exact same thing. The difference is I need to set up different parameters. First parameter is going to be the same, and this makes sense because I'm going to have to pass it US dollars. The only difference is I'm going to also pass it something called places, and I'm going to say that's an integer. So the idea of, hey, we're going to round it to however many places you specify. This is still going to return a double, and just like my other function, it's going to be one line, so return math.round, hopefully that's not a new function to you. If it is, it's pretty self-explanatory. Amount times factor. And rather than just rounding it to two decimal places, I will round it to places, decimal places, which sounds like kind of a mouthful. But uh, so if you pass it to zero, it's going to round to zero. Pass it to, or you pass it to 10, it's going to round to 10. So let's run this thing. Uh, no point because I never called it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, fine. Just forget I did that. You notice where I'm calling the function right here. I called convert, 
and I passed it a single, I passed it a double. So it looks at the signature of the function right here and it says here's a function called convert that takes a double, so we're calling that one. If I do something like this and put in a zero, all right, so now I'm passing a double, and I know this is a double because I defined it as a double. And this, you can't really tell what that is. I guess it's an integer. I mean, it could be a double. Uh, but just because I pass two parameters that match up with those types, it's going to call that function, and you will see that behavior now. So if I put in 12 point some stuff and I convert it, notice I get no decimal places. Right? It would probably be smart on this form to have somewhere where it said number of decimal places, but I don't. Uh, instead, I'm just hard coding a zero in here, which isn't great, but it does allow you to see that uh, we called a different function. So it matches up the, the function name and parameters with the definition of the function right here. Just to make things messier, I'm going to take this function, and I'm being lazy. I'm copying and pasting because I see my videos coming up on seven minutes. This is not allowed, right? I cannot. I can have a bunch of functions with the same name, but they cannot have the same type and uh, order of parameters. So this is a problem, and that says something about that. So what I can do, and what I'm going to do, is I'm going to change this up a bit, and I'm going to just switch them around. I'm going to say places as integer and amount as double. So why does that work? Right? That doesn't look like something that would work. So the idea, I can have functions with the same name, they just can't have the exact same parameters. These are the same things essentially, but as far as Visual Basic is concerned, this one takes an integer and a double, this one takes a double and an integer, and that order matters. It doesn't care what they're called or where they came from. And so let me show you, make this just a little bit more interesting, show you what the heck am I doing, because I've probably lost most people at this point. I'm gonna have a message box and in that message box I'm gonna say func1 just to see what one is actually being called because they're actually gonna return the same data they're both being passed the same things just in a different order and so it's it's a pretty weird example because they do the same thing but I'm just telling you that they're not interchangeable so when you call this first one it's gonna I mean they're gonna you can see the math is exactly the same uh, but when this first one gets called, it's going to pop up this func1 one, func one thing. And when you call the second one, it's going to pop up func2. So let's here's our call right here. Right Here's where we're calling the function. We're passing a double and an integer. So that should call this function. Let's run it and see if we get that little message box showing. And we do. But now let's do this little bit of magic. Now I'm going to pass it something like 3. And USD. All right, let's see what function gets called. Just to illustrate, I'll put some junk in there. And sure enough, we got func2. And you notice my contents aren't there yet because I'm still hung up on the message box. As soon as I kill the message box, I get the answer I was looking for. So rounded to three places. Pretty interesting and possibly unexpected behavior. If you haven't thought about it before, you might be surprised that you can get away with this, but the truth is you probably use uh, overloaded functions all the time, like uh, format percent, format currency, all of those things, they pretty much behave like these two, first two examples here. Most things by default round to two places, but they usually have the functionality built in to round it to whatever you want to round it to. Now, contrasting the second and third functions, that's just ridiculous, really, just switching things around for, just for the sake of being difficult. But the idea that you can do it is important. And sure, I could have, all, I could have a whole host of functions with the same name. Say another one takes 10 different uh, arguments. There's really no limits on that. But the idea that uh, a function, can have, they can share names, but they can't share the exact uh, same parameters. So kind of a tricky topic, something that you will use from time to time. It's one that you've used before. That is overloading functions. Thanks for watching.